What's up, my pilots? Angry Poncho here, and we're back playing Dead Rising. Oh boy. Whew. So, I got some things to say before we start here. Um, this series of videos... Well, hell, let's just go into it. We're going to do a new 72-hour mode, and this is, this is going to be picking up two achievements at the same time, uh, as well as a couple others that you just happen to get along the way. We are going to be getting the Saint achievement, which is to rescue 50 survivors, and we're going to be getting the Transmissionary achievement, which is to receive every transmission from Otis. We might split the, uh, the, the story near the end in order to make both of those easier. Do one and then do the other. But uh, that might not be necessary. We'll just have to see how it goes. We're going to watch all the cutscenes this time through. Even though we've seen them all, or at least some of them from the last one. Because there are going to be new ones. Uh, places we didn't go before, bosses we didn't fight before. Things like that. The cutscenes also don't count towards your game time. So, uh, if you go into a cutscene at noon, it doesn't matter how long the cutscene takes. When you come back out, the internal clock still says noon. Say, buddy! You mentioned something about research for a story. That's right. Got a tip that something big's happening. In a nowhere little town like that? They sure didn't mention anything about it on TV. Yeah, well, I'm freelance, pal. I don't make my living waiting for the TV to tell me what to cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this run is going to be really difficult. Uh, there might be points when I don't talk as much because I'm focusing on what I'm doing. So apologies in advance if I'm a little bit quiet. Here she is. <laughs> Willamette, Colorado. Population 53,594. Distinguishing characteristics, jack shit. <laughs> About the only thing to do in this town is kill time at the shopping mall. Hmm. This run will be made a little bit easier by a couple things. What was that? The army? Yeah. Looks like taking a helicopter was the way to go. I bet they got all the roads blocked off by now. The first thing that's going to make this run easier... Alright, listen. I want to get shots of the whole town before the National Guard finishes roping it off. Take me over the main street. The first thing that's going to make this run easier is the fact that this is going to be a new game plus. We are coming into this with a level 50 character. Uh, basically, this character is already maxed out. Frank has covered wars, you know. So he knows what's going down. Again, the controls for this are weird. It's A and B to zoom in and out. Don't ask me why. Right trigger to take a photo? No? X to take a photo. Yeah, it's, the controls are weird. Um, the second thing that's going to make this easier is some previous runs have unlocked some things for us. Uh, most notably, is one particular weapon. I'm not going to take any photos of this because it doesn't matter. What is that? How much trouble went into making this entire scene? Oh, hang on. Look at the quality of the, the detail on that car compared to the detail on those cars. Those look like they have, they're made of like eight is polygons. This what you came to take pictures of? That one actually is like a fully sure rendered is. model. That's interesting. They put their priorities on where they thought you'd be looking, where you're supposed to be looking. But look, they put they put a lot of effort into that nice playground setup no there. All the lamp posts and things. What the hell's happening here? Somebody had to design an entire, no idea. entire city street, One thing's for sure. just for this. And this isn't even where you where you have the game. Hmm. It's not business as usual in this town. The cars all look kind of flat. And those are the exact same two cars that are right over there. <laughs> so it's a little funny. The zombies look like they're, they're, they're actually using the real models. I'm sorry, I, I not, I've not done much game design, but I think I've played enough games to recognize what details are what, what details have been paid attention to and what happened. Let's see if we can get a good photo of the exploding gas station. That wasn't too bad. 
the helicopter always shakes a little bit before that, so it's hard to get a good photo of this. So the second thing that's going to make this run easier, besides the New Game Plus... Actually, I guess this is sort of still part of the New Game Plus thing. Previous runs have, have gonna, are going to get us some items and some help. Basically, it's, it's going to be the Mega Buster. It's going to be the weapon that's going to get us through pretty much all the bosses. I'm going to be using other stuff for the zombies, uh, but the Mega Buster Take is... Down. We have to check out that building. Huh? Where? Right below us. The Mega Buster is pretty much a one-hit KO on all the zombies. It's a two-hit KO on some of the stronger survivor enemies. And it's a multi-hit, uh, like five or six on most of the bosses. Which is stupendous, considering how much work you have to put in to kill most of the bosses. They're really the hard part of the game. Uh, for the most part, the zombies don't give you a whole lot of trouble unless you're escorting survivors. They're really just a pushover when it's only you. But this, uh, the psychopaths you have to fight, they are serious. That's where the challenge comes in. There's a few of them in particular that are really dangerous. Uh, some of the most some of the hardest ones I've actually gotten pretty good at fighting, like the, the clown with the chainsaws. You have to you have to be good at fighting him to see if you can get the fall. Ah! shot. You have to be good at fighting him because he has the chainsaws and they're great weapons. You want to get those. But there are other just as dangerous psychopaths town. that you, you fight down. a lot less often because they're out of the way or they only appear if certain things happen. Those are going to be tough and we're going to fight all of them because pretty much all of them are holding survivors hostage. The difference between survivors and psychopaths is that psychopaths are trying to kill you and survivors are just other people who aren't zombies. Those are not really technical terms, but that's how I'll be using them. The other factor that was going to make this run a little easier is that I have a checklist. I made this over, hey, over three years ago. Can you get me on the rooftop of that mall? It's not, not like the game has changed. You gotta be time. kidding me! My Man, checklist you are nuts. is a very fine resolution list of things to do. So someone told me this is his right, camera listen. equipment in that. Don't forget to come crate. back for me. As long as you're not dead, Fred. It's Frank. It's Frank. Frank, Frank West. West. Bond. Remember that Chase name, because the whole world's gonna know it in three days when I get the scoop. All right. Whoa! Shit! My camera. Yeah. Good thing he's still going on his neck. I'm still amazed at some of the replayability in my my let's plays. It's funny. Well, I was watching back these videos from the first series, and I was just joking around with myself, doing a little commentary over it. And two or three times in the first ten minutes of footage, I, I made a joke that I was about to make. Like when Frank jumps out of the helicopter here, I was like, don't break your camera, or uh, don't jump into the blades, buddy. And then, of course, both of those were things I actually said in the, uh, the, the first run of this game. It's going to be interesting, I'll tell you that. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. I think, we, I think we can have some fun here. Yeah, my checklist is pretty much it's very there. refined. Huh? Small details are all written down. I'm gonna follow it to You're the letter. Reporter, aren't you? Yeah. Uh, you came alone. Yeah, I'm freelance. You know, go on the battlefield alone, no crew. So, uh, what's going on around here anyway? You came by helicopter, didn't you? Oh, you didn't see him. What did you see from the sky? Well... If it were just a riot, I doubt the military would quarantine the entire area. The moratorium on information getting out is a little... extreme, in my opinion. There's, uh, something else I can't put my finger on. Doesn't sound like civil disobedience. It's too Ooh. quiet. What does it sound like? <laughs> Public men's room? Almost as if everyone's already dead. Oh, look at that. If you look through Carlito's hair, there's no yeah. fog effect on the background. So why don't you just tell me already? What's going on? I think you'd better see for yourself. Hmm. This, my friend. Is hell. Yeah, you can't see it really well there, but in the previous shot, it was obvious that there, the fog effect was overridden by his hair transparency. That's interesting. Noticing stuff like that in video games. All right, 12 p.m. 
Dawn of the first day, three days remain. There's no song of time in this game either. We gotta get her done. We're gonna be trying to move this entire run, we're gonna be in a hurry. But I have a list. I'm, I'm frequently probably gonna pause and check uh, to see what it says because there are gonna be a lot of opportunities in this run where I need to be planning ahead what's gonna happen next. Otherwise, I'm not gonna, not gonna find success. Uh, the two ach achievements that I'm trying to get are both difficult, and they both require planning. Uh, I'm not gonna happen to... I'm not gonna luck into them, really. What in the world? There's gonna be parts where I fail, and I have to revert and try again. I'm gonna be making a backup save between every video, uh, which you can't actually do in-game. I'm actually gonna be doing it with the memory, memory stick. Uh, that's how serious I am about getting this to work. Okay, get the Mega Buster. That's my next checklist item. Where is it? There it is. I walk right by it. Boom. Mega Buster. It's got 300 shots every time you pick it up. Uh, each time... Oh my god, the camera controls are reversed. There we go. That's, that was weird. There. That's the way I like it. Good. I'm playing Spyro. <laughs> Inverted X-axis. It makes sense. It's like you're pulling the camera rather than turning the camera. I don't know. So during this opening bit, our main goal is just to do it quickly and to pick up a shotgun. One of the survivors actually has one. You can notice him on the way uh, down through the, the plaza. Once the zombies break in, he gets overrun really quickly. So if you're going to try and get that back from him, you need to know some karate. You can also use your Mega Buster, but the Mega Buster is not effectively applied to zombies because the Mega Buster does a lot of damage to one enemy. And with zombies, you want to do a little bit to many enemies. Uh, it's just not, a, not the right tool for killing zombies. For zombies, you want like a melee weapon, like a sword that has a, a wide area of berth that you can clear room around you with. You don't want a sniper rifle, you know? Which is what the Mega Buster basically is, because it's high powered. Even more high powered than a sniper rifle. You crazy bitch. Another thing I should note is that the previous run, the last playthrough of this game, I recorded last October. It's April now. It's been like, what, like seven or eight months? No. Well, I guess like six months. But man. Hey, this is no time to ogle pretty girls, son. You looking to get yourself eaten alive by zombies? What? What? Did you just say zombies? Take a look out there. If those ain't zombies, what would you call them? Uh, zombies sounds pretty accurate. There's been more and more of them since last night. Now, they're all that's out there. I just realized Frank is almost clean shaven. Hey, look on the bright side. Zombies are stupid and slow. By the end of the game, he should have a lot of stubble and like a little beard be coming in, right? But I don't think he does. All right then. Be like making yourself useful. Take a look around the mall. Bring anything we can use for the barricade back here. On the way. Come on. Come on. Pronto. Pronto. His voice is familiar. What other games has he done voice acting in? I feel like I've heard that that Pronto before. I don't know. It just rings a bell somewhere. Okay, so it's one of these two cats. Looks like it's Brian who has a shotgun. A red shirt. He's got the shotgun. He's gonna be dead anyway. It doesn't matter. Everybody in this entrance plaza always dies. So even when you're trying to do the uh, achievement where you save 50 people, which is what Saint is, uh, you you can't save any of these people. They're scripted that they're they're gonna die no matter what. You can actually hold the zombies off from the, two, from the couple back by the gate for a long time, but there's an infinite number of zombies and there's no way to get the survivors to follow you. What are you planning? Would you calm down? I don't even know what you're talking about. What the? Perumph. Good dialogue, Capcom. Good dialogue. She's got that maternal adrenaline strength, like a mom who can lift a car off of her baby. Ruh-roh. 
There's a zombie in your mall. What in the hell are you people doing? Run! Quick! Move! Get over here! Everyone, move this way! Quick! To the stairs! Move! You know, Frank was like, wow, a lot, of, a lot of zombies came in here pretty quick. Alright, shotgun time. So, one of the benefits now of being a level 50 character is that we already know all kinds of Kung Fu, which is how I'm going to get myself. Wow, I'm off to a great start. What's up, shotgun? Looking for Brian. Oh, he's already dead. Where you go. Not Maraki Ma! So you can find Brian by the circle of zombies surrounding his designated corpse. Got a shotgun right there. Whoops, I don't want to do the crowd surf move. Oh, oh, I forgot you had the round last kick. Shotgun right there. Okay. That's the one I want. That's a fucking leap. Where's that shotgun? That fight. Dang it. Hmm. A little bit peeved now. There's supposed to be a shotgun in this pile of zombies right here. It looks like. Two hunks of meat and a lead pipe. And he goes to Brian over here. There's the shotgun. Got it. Okay. That's not super important for me because I have the Mega Buster already. But the Mega Buster you cannot hand off to a survivor, and the shotgun you can. It's actually a pretty great weapon to give to a survivor if they know how to use it. The only problem with the shotgun is that sometimes they'll shoot at zombies that are close to you, and you'll get hit as well, and they can kill you. The survivors, when you give them weapons, they're actually dangerous to you as well as the zombies. And as you probably made was probably made very clear in the previous run, the AI is not huh? super bright in this game. Where are the others? I don't know. I hope they got away. As long as those things are in the mall, we better not use this door. Hmm. Barricade ourselves in and wait out for three uh, days. Good plan. Let's just not what leave. What are you doing? The air ducts. They'll get us back into the mall. And apparently, those things aren't smart enough to use the ducts. So they won't be a factor. Wait a minute. You want to get back in there? What for? Hey, <sighs> Nice camera. Are you a photographer? Nice ass. Are you a stripper? As a matter of fact, I am. Frank West, photojournalist. Could you show me some pictures, Frank? You really seem to know what you're doing. What, using a camera? Who are you guys, anyway? And what are you... I took that one near the entrance. That guy do something? Nah, he's nobody. Nope. Thanks for showing me, though. <laughs> nope. No zombies here. No one here but us uh, potatoes. Hey, we're not done talking yet. Just who are you guys? I'm Jesse. The man you saw earlier is Brad. That's all I'm authorized to tell you. Hmm. Frank either bought in a regular shirt or he's missing a button. Because the distance between the first button he has undone and the first button that he has buttoned is funny. It's not the same distance as the distance between his next two buttons. Weird. I already had the Mega Buster, so we'll talk to Otis. He's going to give us uh, a curse, really. Uh, he's going to hand us over the... Re oh my gosh, this feet, this looks really good on the recording. Wow, you're sharp. You can actually read the words. That's amazing. The first time I tried to LP this game, it was in uh, standard definition. You couldn't read any of the dialogue at the bottom because it's too freaking small. I still don't understand why Capcom made the dialogue so tiny. 
the game is in HD. It's, I mean, I know that means you have high resolution and you can make it small and it's still readable in HD TV, HD TVs. But why would you choose to make it small when there's no penalty to making it larger and easier to read? I'm not, I mean, it doesn't have to be, doesn't have to be like grandpa mode, but you need a little something. All right, so we come out and we take a photo of the vent. Fantastic. It's yeah, you know, it's a PP sticker, but it's also how do I? I'm gonna lock this photo in place. Boom. So we'll do that. Oh, look, there's photos from the last run. Spoilers. <laughs> Oh my god, is that? <laughs> I don't remember taking this, but I definitely did. It seems reasonable. <laughs> okay, now I'm trying to turn the camera the wrong way. My uh, default response was wrong, but then once I remember what game I was playing, my brain started to go the other way again. Okay. Hey, anybody around? Hey, anybody around? You're pretty round. Let's go, buddy. Have you seen my wife, Natalie? Yeah, you need to you need to come with me, son. Or dad. That'd be great, fella. Yeah, this way. Name's Jeff Meyer, by the way. I'm Frank. I'm a journalist. I'm not just gonna read the old dialogue, I promise. Natalie, you are one badass bitch. Hey girl! Hey girl! Hey, how you doing? Hey! Natalie Meyer joined. Look, they're going to have a tearful reunion now, too. Jeff! Natalie! <sighs> Taking that photo before, but yeah, you know what. We'll try and get a good prestige point for this run through. Why not? Oi! Cutting your joyous, reu <laughs> Cutting your joyous reunion short. It's not safe here. Come to the security room with me. <laughs> the security room. Sounds like the name of a bar. They're following me. Good. So when you're escorting the survivors back, they have to be up on this ledge for them to come into the room. That's pretty much what I've figured out as the trigger point for how far away they can be and still come in with you, so she should be good to follow us now. Alright, we're moving right along this list. Take a picture of the air, Jeff. Next to you, Jeff and Natalie. Now we're going to head into the warehouse and get our first transmission. Now all the prestige points that we get for this is really just, it's moot. It's gravy, because we don't need any of it. We're already level 50, we don't get any benefit from getting a lot of prestige points on this run-through. That's not why we're rescuing the survivors. We're rescuing them because we're trying to get the achievement for rescuing 50 survivors. Alright, first transmission. Hey, it's Otis back at the security room. This is the warehouse intro transmission. It's usually the first one you get. Next one's going to come in at about 2 p.m. on the 19th, which is today. Okay, I need to go and head towards the food court. That's what we're up to right now. I went past the lead pipe back there I probably should have grabbed. Not a big deal. What else is there around here? It's been a while since I've played. Oh, we're going to get another cutscene here anyway. So give me the gun. That'll be helpful. So, basically, I haven't played this game since last October when I did the first run-through. I might be a little rusty at first, but thankfully the beginning part's not very hard, and there's not a whole lot of time constraints that I'm going to have a hard time beating. But, as we get towards the middle of the game, not really the end, the end things get easier again. It's in the middle of the game that you have the most going on at once, and your schedule gets the busiest, and that's when you start having really close time limits as to whether or not you can make it and rescue people on time. Look! Don't sneak up on me. For in time. Brad was attacked. I located him on the monitor. Oh, oh my shoes. Probably just a sprain. I've got to help Brad, or he's done for. All right, fine. Give me your gun. Come on. I'm the reason you just got hurt. Let me help. No, I can't let a civilian you do that. I mean, see, I mean, see, look, look at the buttons on his. That's, that's what I'm yeah, talking about. well, I don't think they had zombie-infested malls in mind when they wrote those regulations, kid. You know how to use this? Here it comes. Here Kinda. Comes. I've covered wars, you know. <laughs> Every time I hear that, it's like, oh, that's like, this is terrible. See what we mean? See the buttons? Look, that's weird. After I'm through helping you, you and I are gonna have a nice little chat. 
A nice little chat. Okay, we did the Jesse handgun. Now we're gonna head out into the Paradise Plaza and get some untouchable juices and pick up the awning SMG before heading to the food court. If you don't know how to make an untouchable, it's uh, in the blender. <laughs> you blend together a pie and a carton of orange juice, and that will make an untouchable, which is a great healing item, and it also makes you invincible to zombies for a short time, maybe a minute. I don't know exactly how long. Uh, the funny thing is that with a level 50 character, I would rather have bare hands than a pistol, because just a pistol you can only really shoot at one zombie at a time. I'll take that, we're gonna need it. So the SMG is? No. Next one down. <laughs> the, the, the relaxing mall music is so so contrary to the exciting zombie atmosphere. I think it's funny. Okay, the SMG is pretty good. Uh, it's a decent weapon, but I mean, with the Mega Buster and our bare hands, we're good to go for maybe the first quarter of the game. Uh, I'm going to be using the Mega Buster to take out Carlito. It's pretty much an easy fight uh, with that in mind. How many Untouchables am I supposed to make? It's got my guide doesn't tell me how many. I don't know how much would be a waste of time. Yeah, so you just mix up high, and a thing of orange juice, and the drink on the refill might help. You get an Untouchable. I'll make three, just to be cautious. Having a lot of healing items is good, and early on in the game, I don't think there's a huge premium on our time. We just need to be on time for a couple things on day two. But until then, a little bit, a little bit relaxed. You're never that relaxed. I can pick up the katana too. That'll be a good weapon for getting the zombies on the way there. Organi organizing your hot bar is a good idea too. You don't want to get too. Oops. You don't want to get disorganized up there and not be able to find a weapon you want in the heat of battle. Okay, so I did what I needed to do. Now we're headed towards the food court for our first boss fight. And you're gonna get to witness the power of the Mega Buster. Now, this, this boss fight, I think... If you don't have the Mega Buster, your best option is the SMG on the awning. You can use the pistol as a backup if you run out of ammo. But I think with the amount of, of ammo you have in the SMG, which is 100 bullets, you should be able to take out Carlito. It's not going to be easy, and you need to go for headshots because they actually do more damage, even though it's hard to tell sometimes with how short the health meters are. But if you have that SMG, you should be able to take him out. It's not its not that hard of a boss fight, the very first one, but it's going to be easy as pie with the Mega Buster. I don't even know how many shots he's going to be able to, to live through, maybe only three or four, especially if I aim for the head. But with the Mega Buster, I don't really need to. I'm just going to whip it out and fire like crazy when the boss is in sight, uh, because... You get pretty decent auto-aim in this game, it's, it's actually pretty impressive. If I just pulled out my SMG right now and stood still, Frank would just automatically target the zombie. And he actually does a fairly decent job of picking a, a zombie that's the most dangerous to you. He'll usually get one that's a threat. Whoops. Food court. I was trying to do the roundhouse kick, but I forgot you have to kick in midair for in order for that to happen. Roundhouse kick, you hit X just as you land, but you can only do it if you do the kick while you're in the air, which is hitting X while you're in the air. Every every attack is X. And your camera is X, which is weird. He has some kind of weapon that isn't quite the SMG I have. I don't know. <laughs> Your, uh, girlfriend sent me to find you. Who? Jesse? Damn it! Fight Carlita. Okay, that's our next step. Okay, we'll have to talk about this later. You know how to use that gun? I've never fired at a person. All right, I'll cover you from here. You need to stick to the shadows. Try to get close to the target, okay? And what am I supposed to do when I get close? <laughs> Well, the best solution would be to shoot the guy. But if you can't do that, keep him busy dodging your bullets and stay out of trouble. Are you up to it? I'm a lot better with a camera. But yeah, I'll give it a shot. Ha ha ha, give it a shot. That's a pun. All right. Next time he reloads, I'll lay down a suppressing fire. Yeah, Carlito's just bored over there. I'm just fire off your bullets. I'm counting on you. Make your way over there. 
This is gonna be pretty quick. Okay. One, two, three! In fact, the quicker I do this, the better off we're gonna be. I don't wanna get a transmission in the middle of this. Oops. Yeah, we got half an hour until the transmission comes in. Let me get my mega booster out. I'm gonna hop on top of a box over here, and then I'm gonna kill the boss. <laughs> Right or to the left, to the left. There we go. Whoops, that's the camera. Thank you. Oh. Hey. You're dead! Oh, one shot! Wow, that's funny. Yeah, that's how easy it is with the Mega Buster. I didn't even hit him in the head, I just ran up to him and pushed X and he died. He will be tougher later on, he gets health, more health each time you have to fight him. And some of the enemies later on actually stand up, to, I think, to five or six shots from the Mega Buster. The Gunstone owner in particular, I remember being a pain. Just compare how much trouble that was to uh, how much Who it took the first anyway? time through. I don't know. Well, thanks for your help. The name's Brad. I'm Frank West, photojournalist. And right now, I'd rather have an explanation than your thanks, Brad. Douche. Sorry, I've got nothing to tell you. What's wrong with a collar on your shirt? Look, I don't know what Jesse told you, but as far as I'm concerned, we're through working together. So you cover your zombie story and leave the rest to us. I just can't believe he's still wearing that tie. You, Even uh, loose him, it's a huge hazard. You guys are looking for someone here, aren't you? Who is that? Where did you, you take You help it? me, I help you. Frank's buttons are gonna bother me the entire game. I need to get him in another outfit as soon as possible. I think I have a prisoner jumpsuit I can make him wear next Damn. time I go to the security room. You're one hell of a journalist, aren't you, Frank? A hot-headed underhanded hotshot paparazzi with nothing better to do than to invade people's privacy. I try. You got a point? You win, Frank. Let's work together. Okie doke. Jesse and I are DHS agents. And yes, we are looking for the man in that picture. You're with Homeland Security. Is that guy a terrorist or something? I took that picture in the entrance plaza. Right near the front door. The entrance plaza. You're sure? Just look at the photo, dude. Hey! So do I have your permission to cover this story? Or not? Uh, they're like teenagers. Alright, that is all for this episode. I'm going to zippity doo -dah into case 1-3 in the next episode of Let's Play Dead Rising. And this is, this is what you could call a 100% run. If there was one single run-through of this game that does the most, it's this one. So, we'll, we'll call it a 100% sort of offhand. Technically, there's a lot of other achievements and side quests, and well, not really side quests. I'm gonna do all the scoops, uh, pretty much all the scoops, because that's what you have to do to get all the survivors and all the psychopaths. But I'm not gonna, you know, use every weapon or, you know, or anything like that. Uh, uh, and that's that's that. Oh boy, this is gonna be tough. It's gonna be easy a little bit at the beginning here. I I don't have a lot of boss fights on my first page, but when I turn to page two of my guide, it's like, oh, things are getting Dangerous. There's a lot of a lot of uh, psychopaths and a lot of survivors to escort. We're going to uh, we're going to have some fun on this run. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Let's Play Dead Rising.